Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. My name is Piyush and this is sixth video in the series AZ900 with Piyush. I hope you have been following the previous videos till now. If you haven't seen that, please feel free to check that out before moving ahead with this video. In this video, we will be talking about Azure virtual machines. What is the virtual machine? How do we create one? What are resource groups? And how do we associate a machine with the resource group? and all the benefits of cloud that we have already discussed. Please watch the video till the end because we will be doing some knowledge checks at the end with some sample exam questions for AZ900 certifications. So let's start the video. So before starting this course, I have provided the exam blueprint. How many modules will be there? What all the topics will be included? So in broader terms, these three topics will be included in the exam. And we have already completed cloud concepts in our previous five videos so far. So this topic has been completed and now we will be looking into Azure architecture and services. So I'm pretty sure you are still familiar with the concept of shared responsibility model and difference between IES, PaaS and SaaS because this topic is around virtual machines. So virtual machines is an infrastructure as a service. In this service, Microsoft Azure is responsible for maintaining your physical hardware, like your physical infrastructure, networking and host, and all the other parts of it, such as your operating system, networking control, they all are managed by you as the user. So virtual machine, because it's an IES service, it provides you full control over the operating system. Please remember this point. This is really important. If you need access to your operating system if you need to install custom applications on your on your virtual machine or if you need to manage all the server patchings by yourself then IES and virtual machines would be the ideal choice. So now we will be creating an Azure virtual machine by logging into Azure portal but before that let me give you a brief introduction about a virtual machine if you are from a non-tech background or if you are a beginner to cloud itself. So virtual machine is nothing but a computer sitting on the cloud that you are renting for your specific use case. Let's assume you are a gamer and you need to play a certain game that required a certain specification like this much of GPU, this much of CPU and RAM and the option that you would go with, you go outside or you, you know, go and buy a new hardware with that specification, which cost a lot of capital expenditure. And this is what you would do if you are using on-prem servers, right? But if you want to use cloud, you can just go and provision a virtual machine as per your specification, you can play your game and then you can decommission the machine once you are done with the gaming part. So with that model, you are paying only the time that you are using the virtual machine plus some storage cost. So that will save you a lot of money. Plus it will provide you high performance and all the other benefits of cloud such as scalability, elasticity and whatnot. Now compare this use case with a, a corporate world where you have a lot of applications that need some server that they could host on, right? Like let's say you have a three tier architecture or you have a, you, know, you have a website that you are hosting somewhere. If you are hosting on your personal desktop, it has to be running 24 by seven, which is not really a feasible solution. So instead you go ahead and provision a virtual machine and deploy your website on that virtual machine and it will be running all the time and you can apply all the scalability and high availability on top of that so that your users will not face any downtime. So that's what virtual machine is. Now let's go to the Azure portal and see how we can create an Azure virtual machine. All right, as you can see, I have logged into my Azure portal with portal.azure.com and I have to create a new virtual machine now. So again, as I have previously told you, how do we create a new resource? There are several ways. I'm just going to search it over here and click on virtual machine, right? So there are no machines running at the moment. You go over here and hit create. There are several options. So you choose the first one as your virtual machine. Now let's go these uh, options over here one by one. First one is subscription. So if you are using an Azure free trial, you have a different value over here. For me, I have already upgraded to pay as you go subscription. Then the next part is resource groups. 
So again, like I have told you before, resource group are nothing but the logical separation of resources in a group. You can create a separate group for your dev environment, test environment, prod environment. You can club those resources together and you can delete all the resources in a resource group by just deleting the resource group. So this is a good way to organize your resources, right? And most of the Azure resources would need to have you have the resource group provision before you can use that resource. If we already have some resource group created, you can just uh, select it from here. Let's create a new resource group by clicking over here, create new, and now give this resource group a name, demo Piyush, okay, click okay. Now the resource group is created as simple as that. Let's give this virtual machine a name, SVM Piyush, and select the region where you would want this virtual machine to physically exist. So for example, US East, this is the region in which I am provisioning my virtual machine. Now set the availability options, like how redundant you would want this virtual machine to be. So you can select availability zone, virtual machine, availability sets. These two terms, virtual machine, scale set and availability set, we haven't seen yet, which we will be covering in the next video but we have already seen availability zones. So I am selecting the zone, let's say zone one. This will be the zone where my virtual machine will be existed physically. Then security type is like, let's keep it standard for now. Over here, you can choose your virtual machine image, like what type of VM you would want to create, Ubuntu, Red Hat, or you can even create Windows machines as well. So you have a lot of options to choose from, right? For this demo, I'll be creating an Ubuntu server. So let's click over here, right? Then you specify your VM size over here. So cost of your virtual machine depend on a lot of factors such as storage, uh, VM size, and all these options like high availability options. Click over here, see all sizes. And so these are the all the available sizes we have. I'll choose the smallest one so that I could pay the minimum amount, right? So if you see B1, this one over here, it has 0.5 RAM, two gigs of data disk, uh, one CPUs that should be sufficient for our use case. And then there are other machine types and sizes as well. Right, so there are a lot to choose from, but for this demo, let's just uh, use this one okay, and click select. So I have selected this machine. Now the authentication type, whether you would want to uh, SSH using an SSH public key or a password. So here would be your default username as your user. You can change the name as well. And you would want to use any existing public key or generate a new key pair. Let's uh, use this one, generate new key pair. And key pair name would be this one, test VM use key. I hope this is visible, right? Now we need to select the inbound ports as well, because if you need to enable a communication with your virtual machine, you would need to SSH into the virtual machine First, you would have to allow port 22, which is an SSH port. This port needs to be open before you enter into the virtual machine. So over here, let's select the default one and click over here next. Now it says what type of OS disk you need. So there are different options again, premium SDD, standard SSD, premium SSD. Premium SSDs are the high performance disk. Right. So compare this with your uh, computer system. You have your SDD, then you have your SSD. SSDs are really high performing disk. So I'll just choose standard SSD for this demo purpose. And you have, again, there are two types of redundancies. If you see over here, local redundant storage and then zone redundant storage. Local redundant storage means your disk will be locally replicated in a single data center. That means if that data center has some issues, if it fails, then your data would be unavailable for that time. But in zone redundant storage, your data is replicated across three zones. 
So even if you lose two zones, you still have that data available from the third zone, right? So this is how you can again achieve high availability. But for this demo, let me just choose standard SSD. This OS disk is nothing but your boot disk. That means it's not persistent by default. You see over option delete with VM. That means when you delete your VM, this disk will also be deleted, but you can uncheck this box to make it persistent disk. Right. For now, I'll just keep it the default way, delete with VM and you can have some additional disk as well. You click over here, create and attach a new disk and then you have to uh, format the file system and mount that uh, volume on top of that. But we are not doing that at the moment. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that. Then we have some advanced options. Right. I'll just keep it default. Click over here, which says networking. Right. So we have virtual network, subnet, public IP. There are a lot of networking concepts over here and this I will be covering in the networking section of this course. So for now, just understand virtual network is an isolated network in a data center where your all the resources will be provisions where your all resources will reside. Right. So I am creating a new virtual network through this uh, wizard and it has a subnet of 10.0.0 slash 24. This is a CIDR range which which will be having a lot of IPs and we will do the IP calculation as well later in the course. And we have a public IP associated with it. So there are different type of IPs. We have public IP. We have the internal IP. Public IP is nothing but uh, IP that is accessible over the public Internet. If you do not attach a public IP with this virtual machine, you would not be able to SSH into that. Also, you cannot install any web application on top of that. Right? So public IP you generally used in a web facing application and it is not meant for the database or any other secure applications. We have already opened the public inbound ports on port 22. If you want to place this virtual machine behind a load balancer, but uh, we are just using one virtual machine at the moment. So there is no need for that. Click on management. And again, it will ask you some uh, additional features such as login with Azure Active Directory. We will have a session uh, like a separate session for Azure Active Directory and some other options to enable backup or enable auto shutdown. Right. Then we have monitoring. In monitoring, you can enable alerts or you can enable boot diagnostic. I'll just keep it disabled for now. Then click over here next. Okay. Here is your custom data. Custom data is nothing but the script or commands that you would want to run when your uh, VM starts. Like if I want to install certain uh, applications because uh, with virtual machines is an IAS. We have the capability to install the custom applications on top of it. So from this particular section, you can do that automatically, such as let's say sudo app get update. If I do that, then uh, this command will run once the VM boot up. So that's what it is. And then there are some advanced features, which is not really required at the moment. So I'll click on here next tag. You can select your tags over here. Tags is generally required in case of reporting and analytics purpose. So let me just keep it default for now. And hit review and create. Once you do that, it will provide you all the basic details that you have entered along with the cost that you will be charged uh, by using this virtual machine and all the other things. Right. So you verify everything. And once you do that, click create. Now it will take some time and it will provision a virtual machine for you. Before that, you can download your private key from here. Uh, you will only been asked to select this option one time before you provision your virtual machine. And after that, this will not appear again. So make sure you download your private key before you move ahead. So click over here. I have downloaded the virtual machine private key, which is dot PEM extension. 
Now it says deployment is in progress. That means your virtual machine deployment provisioning of your virtual machine is in progress. It will take some time and it will provision the virtual machine for you. So along with the virtual machine, it is creating some additional resources. If you see over here, it created a network interface, public IP address, virtual network, network security group. Network security group is nothing but the inbound rules that we have enabled. So we have enabled SSH access on port 22. So that's what it is. Now it says the deployment has been completed. You can go to the resource. So over here is your virtual machine. It's currently running that. That is why this start option is disabled, but you can restart it from here, stop it from here or delete the virtual machine. Right. So you can review all the details from here, all the things that it has created. Right. And all the other options such as networking. Right. So this is your SSH rule that you have enabled from any source. That means from any IP, this is not uh, by the way, this is not a secure rule. You should always mention your source CIDR range, like from where you are logging or if you are behind a corporate network. So you put your CIDR range over here so that it is not accessible to everyone because I will be just deleting this virtual machine after this demo. So I have just kept it default, which is any and destination is any services SSH on port 22. So this will allow me to SSH into the virtual machine. And there are some default rules that is created by default for you. So please have a look at those as well. And then we have different options to connect. Like you connect with an SSH client or a bastion host, right? So these are the instructions as well. It says your private keys should only have the permission of uh, 400. And then you provide a path to your SSH private key. And you run this command from your terminal window, right? Or you can use uh, applications such as putty or super putty to log into your virtual machine. And there are all other options like your disk. This is the default OS disk that we have used and we have not created any data disk. That is why this field is blank. And all other options that you can review and we will cover most of these in the later sections. So this is how you can provision a virtual machine. All right, time for a quick knowledge check. So take a screenshot of this page and try to answer all these questions. There are five questions in this particular video. So try to understand the con concept and then try to answer these questions. If you find any difficulty, feel free to revisit the video. Answers will be there in the video itself or you can try it out yourself on the Azure portal. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I hope this session was also somewhat valuable to you and you have learned something out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it across so that others can also take advantage of it. If you have any questions, any queries, let me know in the comment section below and I will try to answer those questions in our upcoming session on Saturday. You can also join the session and ask me question live or I will reply to your comment as well. And I will see you tomorrow with another video which is about virtual machine scale sets and availability sets. So stay tuned for that and you have a good day.